Welcome in this afternoon, Neil uh, O'Connor, who is a crime writer and also a journalist. Yes. Uh, he is a journalist who is participating in the Isla Festival, Irish, Spanish, and Latin American uh, Literary Festival. Uh, very welcome, uh, Neil. Thanks, uh, Could you tell me, do you have any connection with the Spanish speaking world? Um, I have no connection except that I'm just back from Spain. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> I was on holiday in Spain there, so I'm just back. Okay. But... And could you tell us about your work, about mm -hmm. your, uh, what you write? Something? Sure. I'm the true crime editor with the Sunday World newspaper. That is the newspaper of um, the main crime newspaper really in the country. We do a lot of exposés and um, uh, my job is really to um, concentrate on true crime cases that have captured the public imagination. So, for instance, in the uh, Celtic Tiger years, we saw an awful lot of um, wives, for instance, um, killing their um, husbands for no other reason than ambition. These were, uh, this was unprecedented in that uh, for the first time, these murders weren't happening because of drink or drugs or um, deprivation. They were happening because um, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was easier to get rid of someone than. Um, than to divorce them in terms of um, that's how ambitious people became. And uh, so we had the, an incredible uh, story, for instance, of a, of a woman um, in Clare, uh, Sharon Collins was her name, and she was a woman in her 40s, and she Googled the world hitman because she decided she wanted to bump off her partner so she could inherit uh, his millions. and. Uh, she decided she was also going to bump off his uh, his two sons uh, so that she, she could secure his uh, inheritance for her own sons. And these are the kind of stories, if you like, of the, of the time. Okay, so you are writing those kind of stories in the newspaper, in this true crime newspaper. Yes. But besides that, yes. you write uh, books. I do, I write novels too. Um, from spending a lot of time in court, um, I felt very constrained by uh, having to stick to the absolute facts of the case in that um, uh, when when people go into court they have to leave um, the language of emotion you know at the door of court is a very clinical process and yet it is such an emotional uh, journey for families and uh, there's always uh, like a murder or a rape or uh, savagery involved and um, I, f I needed an outlet for that, so I started to write novels. And do you spend that much time in the court because of your job as a yes, reporter? Yes, exactly. Okay. There is something here, uh, because in a Spanish-speaking world, we don't have this literary, uh, this literary division to called uh, true crime. Mm -hmm. So could you, uh, it's not, 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 not fiction at all in that. Mm -hmm. It's just a report. Uh, for instance, a book like this mm. is a journalist work, or because it's not a novel, it's not mm. fiction. No, well, well, this is more of a sort of a biography, a life story, but it uh, about Jim Donovan, uh, who founded the forensic science lab in this country, and this was an extraordinary true crime story, if you like, in that um, Jim uh, was a crime fighter, and yet he was also a victim of crime because uh, because of his. Um, the uh, incredible evidence he could give in court that would put um, gangsters basically in prison. Um, he was uh, targeted by them. They tried to assassinate him and they uh, blew off part of his uh, feet in a car bomb and nearly killed him. And uh, as a result of, if you like, um, uh, he, he was, as I say, just this incredible, incredibly important to the crime fighting world and yet he was a victim. So his story uh, was a true story and um, and and it was I I thought it was fascinating that uh, it, there was never any justice for Jim in terms of um, putting the man responsible behind bars. Okay, uh, when well, I, I did a little research about true crime literature in, mm. here in Ireland, mm. I visited a couple of big uh, bookshops and I found that it's very popular. Mm. And also, but I found in the in the section of true crime, mm. I saw kind of a novel like a cold blue from Truman Capote. Yes. So there is something is yes. not completely true, has been fictionized. How is that? This yes, it's interesting. Yes. Um, 
I suppose, if you like, it's when a story uh, captures the imagination or a character captures the imagination to such an extent that what people believe about the character um, it might not always be um, as real as uh, the story is, but it becomes almost fictional. I'll give you an example. Um, one of the biggest gangsters in this country was a man called Martin Cahill, um, known as the General. And um, he uh, became known as somebody who um, was like a Robin Hood character. He kind of, uh, so there was, a, there was a level of acceptance for what he did in terms of, he was considered someone who had been born um, in very impoverished circumstances and who always liked to outwit the guards. And uh, you, you, you'll have seen the film about his life. Um, and uh, if you like, he took on um, a persona in, in the public imagination that, that nearly became bigger than, uh, than, than, the, than the actuality of who he was. For instance, Jim Donovan would have been his victim and he would have, uh, uh, the general would have been behind the car bomb on, on Jim. But so for instance, um, RTE, um, the state broadcaster, as part of a Culture Ireland um, series, filmed the general. Now, Jim Donovan was the victim, the living proof that the general was not a cultural character. So it is a very strange kind of a, a murky line, but it, it, it um, yes, it is. It is definitely when when the language of a story becomes almost fictional, but the story is true. The story is true. Yes. And also, you write another kind of books which are thriller crime yes. books, and mm -hmm. those books, I suppose, you take something from your job, from your stories. You that yes. helps you your yes. journalist. Yes. Aspect of Julie. Yes. Well, for instance, in um, those novels, they're uh, about they're um, they're about a uh, a detective inspector, a female detective inspector, and um, she, she's based on a real person who I would have seen in court, and um, being grilled by a um, a defence uh, barrister, and um, it it was the way her body language. Uh, conveyed her absolute contempt for the questions being asked. She never sort of look, uh, turned to look this uh, barrister in the eye when she answered his questions. She only ever answered the judge. And um, uh, it was, it was, it is so hard to get a case to court in the first place. Um, there almost needs to be um, irrefutable proof in the case to get it to court. And yet it falls to 12 citizens to decide whether or not it is true, but for the guards who investigated, um, they're convinced they have their man once they get them to court or woman. And in the process of your job as an investigator or as a, report, a crime reporter, is there any anecdote, any big travel you have been involved? Uh, plenty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, uh, uh, well, I had to go undercover once um, uh, during the, again, the just as the, the boom years were ending a couple of years ago now, um, uh, we found a, 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 a very uh, respectable, um, so supposedly, uh, character um, uh, who was running a mortgage uh, broker. Uh, he was acting as mortgage broker. This man had been the head of, a, of uh, the Wicklow uh, County GAA and uh, board, and he was, as I say, well respected. But what he was doing was he was providing his clients with fake... Uh, bank documents um, to provide to banks uh, showing that they had uh, money in their account and say a savings history and credit rating so as to to get them money to buy uh, houses now uh, whatever level of sympathy there might be for people who wanted to get onto the property ladder and um, he would have been regarded as a sort of one another rogue who was kind of helping people in even though what he was doing was criminal when you consider what the, where this country is now in terms of um, and how many people have lost their homes, he was most definitely, you know, a, a very dangerous man. Just to finish, uh, what term would describe you better, uh, writer or journalist? Uh, writer. Writer. Yeah. <laughs> and in order to work in a tabloid like the yeah. one you work, you yeah. need to be more work writer than journalist? Or? No. Uh, I would say you have to be more journalist because actually it doesn't matter. Uh, the writing doesn't matter um, because it's quite formulaic in journalism, as you know. Uh, the story 
uh, is everything. But of course, for commercially successful authors, the story is everything too. Okay. Thank you very much for Thank coming. you very much. And we hope you enjoy our festival. Absolutely. Well, thank you.